Well, good morning, 1030 already a.m. on this beautiful Sunday morning. Well, it's a little gray here, but it's uh, I know it's sunny somewhere up there. My name is Tamara Rossander, and I'm the spiritual director here at Centers for Spiritual Living White Rock. And we all come to our heart centered community. Thank you for joining us today. And I just want to take a moment to center us in prayer, knowing that today right here, right now, as we breathe that we are all connected. There is one life, one love, one divine presence that is operating in, through, and as each of us. So today I claim this knowing of this truth that there is no separation, that we walk this path together, that love leads us and guides us throughout the day, knowing that today there will be many celebrations, many heartaches, all different things, and yet we can stay centered, knowing this truth that we are one with that one mind. So it is with great gratitude I release these words to the law of mind, knowing right action is already happening and it is already so. I ask you to join me in saying, and so it is. So this morning, I am thrilled to have back one of our favorite musicians, Ranj Sings. He is, <clears throat> Ranj makes music with a distinct Indian Western flair that draws on his, and um, he's a singer, songwriter, self-taught guitarist, love for rock music and heartfelt lyrics. He refers to his unique blend of music as Indo-Canadian folk. So I want to welcome Ranj. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm just a simple man with simple dreams and simple plans. And there's no one else I would rather be. Play my tunes to pass the time I'll sing out a key The words won't rhyme It's the only time I can find some peace My peace I'm just a simple fool Don't really care for any rules Spend my time chasing a dream if I fail, if I fall, I really don't care at all Just one chance is all I really need Can't you see that all we really need Is the will to follow our dreams Can you see what it is I see Take a chance and follow your dreams I'm just a simple man ah, I'm just a simple man and I really don't care where I stand Wrong or right, it's okay with me Sometimes late at night I wander off to the other side And let my mind take me far from here I'm just a simple fool, don't really care for any rules Spend my time chasing a dream If I fail, if I fall, I really don't care at all Just one chance is all I really need Can't you see that all we really need Is the will to follow our dreams Can you see what it is I see Take a chance 
follow your dreams Just a simple man Thank you Oh, so good to have you back, Ron Thank you so much Awesome to be here, thank you Oh, it's always so wonderful to have you. And we would love you to share if where your maybe your website or I know that you're going to be doing a concert with Ivan coming up July 5th. So any yeah. information that we can share, please put in the chat for us today. I will do. Thank we can, you. We're, we're starting to be some groupies. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm as we begin, so. thanks, Rand. So as we begin our gathering today as settlers on this land, we're honored to live and operate on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of the Coast Salish peoples. We want to thank the First Peoples who continue to live on these lands and care for them, along with the waters and all that is above and all that is below. So here at CSL White Rock, we are an inclusive spiritual community and learning center. We teach spiritual principles and offer tools to use in all areas of our life regularly and consistency. Our life flourishes and flows out of ease and grace when we practice our spiritual walk. So let's walk together on this path and walk each other home all the while transforming our lives and the lives of others. And I haven't even started yet and already I'm crying. <laughs> And that's okay. That's okay. I feel and honor every sensation in my body. I feel and honor every sensation in my body. So the body remembers. Well, I really resisted this topic this week. I was like, I don't, I don't want to talk about that. That just seems something way too hard to think about all the things that our body remembers and how we need to focus in on that, our past traumas and all the things that where, you know, you hear the, the term, you know, dis-ease where the, the emotion will get stuck in our body and then it'll create uh, maybe a cancer maybe it'll create some type of illness I was like that that just it sounds so depressing <laughs> and horrible to think about all the time so then I started to think about our body remembers and I thought about riding a bike when I get on my bike and even if I haven't ridden it for a few years my body automatically remembers it starts pedaling, it adjusts to balance. And then if I get really crazy, maybe I take my hands off the handlebars and then I'll allow myself to feel that freedom. Now I'm talking pedal bike, not a motorbike this time. <laughs> I won't take my hands off my motorbike, I promise. So, but the body is such a wonderful, a wonderful, beautiful expression of the one and how different it is for each of us. So thinking about our body as that body temple and knowing that unprocessed and unhealed emotions can hide in there. And over time, they may cause problems, whether, as I said earlier, the serious diseases, or maybe even it's just a headache or your arm is stuck. I think about people with frozen shoulder, they can't lift their shoulder above their, of their arm, above their shoulder. They can't lift their arm above their shoulder. That's what I was trying to say. But the body and its biomechanics and 
engaging with our bodies is in a much richer and deeper way. If we can think of our bodies and allow ourselves to feel those feelings and let them move through us, I think we could lead much healthier lives and be more authentic in our, in our space. You know, this morning it was uh, Father's Day and June 19th, Juneteenth with down in the US is, is a very profound day regarding the traumas that have happened to their um, black and African people and, and that they're freeing themselves from slavery. So there's that trauma of past healings and generational, and there's been a lot of work recently with constellational healing. And I've heard in the past where if I can heal myself, that I can heal seven generations behind and seven generations in front of me. So when I start to focus on maybe serving something outside of myself rather than what's inside of myself, as I'm serving both, I'm serving what's inside of myself because my healing is the utmost. And then, but then it can, it can ripple out and heal other places and other people. So I know you have to remember that our bodies are the perfect example of the creative power of the mind. So that again, going back to it's both our own mind and the collective unconscious of society's mind. And many of us might have, have had a wonderful healing when we start to do our prayer work, when we do our meditation. There are different ways with our spiritual practice that we can heal ourselves. You know, Ernest Holm talks about healing. And on page 210 of the Science of Mind, there's sometimes people think that the misconception about free will means that when a practitioner is working with a client, that it's their will that heals them. But willpower has nothing whatever to do with mental healing. Its use would simply imply that the practitioner excess exercises a personal thought force over his patient. This is a false suggestion, which is always knowing that our oneness with good and God and the creative medium law, our treatments are free from any thought of control. So all thoughts of doubt concerning one's ability to heal come from the belief that it is the personality and not the law which does the healing. It is not the personality that does the healing. It is not the personality of the practitioner. It is them knowing the truth that you, each person is whole, perfect, and complete. So I love that thought that you, you can heal, but you must know that you can. You must know that you can heal yourself. So we're thinking about emotions and how they're stuck in our, our bodies and the different thoughts that we try and push down. You know, there's the personal, societal, ancestral trauma, but we can't ignore those because then we'd be using spiritual bypass to gloss over the experience rather than heal it. And then if we, if we push it down and not heal it, then it just festers. And bypassing our trauma, traumas, we're telling our bodies that they cannot have the freedom to heal. And this, again, can manifest in discomfort and disease. So, but there's things we can do. There's things that we can do. Um, there's lots that we can do treatment. We can do our spiritual practice. I, I was thinking about this, so the body stores remembers and stores trauma and I think I some might say I had a bit of a traumatic childhood with different things happening I, it was interesting I was at a yoga class and we were doing 
our, it was a yin class. So you were in yin yoga, you hold your stretches a lot longer. So you move through them very slowly and then you hold them for a certain length of time. So it was the end of the class and the teacher um, was wonderful. She was coming around and putting some oils on our, our face. We could get the smell and playing some soft music. And then she played the song Songbird by uh, Fleetwood Mac. And I was like, okay, I love this song. And all of a sudden, the, so the lyric came on that I wish you all the love in the world, but most of all, I wish it for myself. And when that happened, the floodgates <laughs> opened and I was lying in a puddle in the middle of yoga class, just sobbing just sobbing. And I think because I was in the position where I was opening my hips, it was the, a twist that was causing all of a sudden that stuck energy in my hips that they say that is where we hold family trauma is in our hips. I had it turned in such a way that it allowed that energy to flow through and I was able to release whatever was stuck in that place. So, you know, it can happen in unexpected times. And it just that that moment reminded me that we can move to do things to move through that trauma. And if we're feeling it to allow ourselves not to stuff it down, not to stop thinking, not to stop feeling it. It's important that they're remembered to remember that they're called feelings, not thinkings. You know, we feel our experiences and while we use our minds to process them, our bodies are going to hang on to these imprints until they we permit them to be felt and released. And often these feelings and sensations, they need to be seen and felt in order to relax. So that's what happened to me in that situation. I just allowed my body to relax. I was listening to beautiful music, had wonderful words, and then it was just able to let it go. Luckily, my, my husband was next to me in this class looking over going, oh my gosh, am I going to have to take her to the doctor or what's happening? And of course, the yoga instructor, but it was all fine. I was just able to breathe through it, let it go. And so it was, but, and I learned to be present in that moment. And even though it was uncomfortable, because I was in the middle of a yoga class and I was a little bit embarrassed and that's okay. And that's okay. Nobody came up to me afterwards and said, wow, you know, that was, are you okay or anything? People just let me have my space. And I think it's important that we allow when, when somebody is having a moment to allow them to have that moment and not reach in to try and fix or help, um, there is a, a program that I've done. You guys have heard, heard me talk about it before. And I love the one thing we have in there is that we're always told not to hand somebody a Kleenex if they're crying. If they want a Kleenex, allow them, hold them able to go get their own Kleenex. And I, at first I thought, well, that's kind of awful. You know, somebody could be having maybe a little bit snotty, a little bit you know, a mess and I just want to help them. But what that does is, I don't know if you think about it, if you've ever been crying and somebody hands you a Kleenex, what do you do? I know for me, I like, oh, oh, okay, breathe Tamara, stop. It's time to stop that emotion. And it's, it's, and because what's happening is we're, I'm the person handing the Kleenex over is trying to make themselves more comfortable because they don't want to see somebody in discomfort. They don't want to see somebody crying. So they're not doing anything that's 
meaning you know anything other than trying to comfort but yet it then also signals in our brain how we've been in society oh you know what is there's that song i think what is it big girls don't cry and how often are men allowed to have their emotional responses of crying not very often so it's important i think when we're with somebody and witnessing somebody having that moment is to be there and help them relax and let them express the feelings that they're feeling and to move through it. And sometimes too, when we're in those moments, we'll have the, we could be feeling, going back to our, <clears throat> maybe reliving a bit of a trauma, something could trigger us and doing that and we could go into the fight, flight or freeze days. As I don't know if anybody else has ever experienced it, but how something will happen and it will be just a tone of a voice or something and it'll take me back, right? <laughs> to when I was a little girl and I'll be like, <gasps> like, not being able to breathe, not being able to do something. And it's not anything that that person at that moment is ever meant to do or wanted to do. It's just they triggered something in my brain that was reliving it through my body. And sometimes it, we can freeze, we're gonna run or we're gonna attack back. But I, I, I found it curious, I was thinking about this and I thought it, when we freeze and we don't know what to do or what to stay with those stuck emotions, it's, it's their immobility. We need to, uh, unthaw that freezing. We need to move that immobility through thawing involves freeing up the body's natural movement. It's like restoring your circulation when you have frostbite. When we have that frostbite, you know, and it's, it's painful at first when we start to get the circulation back, it really, really hurts. But we just know that it has to be done slowly and gently and over time. And I think that's the other thing about working with our body, that everything doesn't just happen over instantaneously. I think we know that, you know, healing takes time. And if we're in that place, it's turning to somebody and getting the help of a practitioner talking to a therapist, maybe doing some somatic with the body, doing some somatic healing. There is a new therapy out where they get you to move. I did, I did a, um, I went to a healing session with a somatic therapist and it was interesting. They had me stand on one side of the room, tell my story. And then they had me move over to the other side of the room to when, if I had, if the story was changed, how would it be? What would I be experiencing? So I thought that was really interesting. They got me to physically move, to change things. And I, I love that. And as talking to a friend of mine, she is a brain specialist. <laughs> I don't, I, I, that's probably, there's probably a more technical word than brain specialist that she does down in, uh, in Western Washington and she studies the brain. And she said, what she's found and discovered is that when we experience a trauma, the best thing that we can do for ourselves is to move. So she was walking, um, her and her young daughter were walking their dog. And unfortunately, another dog got loose out of a yard and came and mauled their little, sorry for all the puppy lovers out there telling this story, but mauled their dog. So they took it to the vet. They did everything. She got her husband to, to deal with the dog and she was dealing with her young daughter and she took her to the playground and made her run around the track and to run through um, to get that emotional response out of her body so that it didn't stay there. And it, it helped. She goes, it's funny. She said, I'm, I'm a brain scientist and I know how this works, this energy, and yet I don't, I don't always remember to do it. I don't always remember, but in that instant, she was like, 
this is what I need to do for my daughter so that this doesn't get stuck anywhere, that she's able to clear through it. And, and luckily she was, and it, it didn't have a, any further effect on her. But healing health and learning to feel our feelings and re releasing our old stuck emotions and sensations, again, doesn't happen overnight. You know, we're tempted to think of healing and growth as, as linear, linear or binary events. I used to have this or that trauma, but I processed it. Now it's done. But that's not the way that growth happens. And health isn't a yes or no question. It's there's a whole spectrum and the path through healing means looking at our own experience of our lives in new and different ways over and over again. Is that somatic healing? This is the story. This is the way I wanna be now. This is how I'm gonna move through this. So our bodies quite literally keep the score of every thought and mental attitude and trauma that we experience. Whether we're trying to push these pains away mentally or not, they can be stored and they eventually need to be addressed in order for us to live free and authentic lives. And it, it can be hard. It's that, that, that painful feeling when we start to defrost our fingers, when it gets really tender but that's okay. But it's again, it's just a gentle way to begin is just starting to notice whatever sensation the body is having and patiently and curiously considering whatever comes up. This process, while personal, each of us can be used to address and begin to correct the systems that have traumatized our bodies and hearts over the last centuries. So one day I, I wrote, I was reading a story about <clears throat> um, from Marianne Williamson's where she was on a plane and she ended up sitting next to a little boy and it, he was by himself and he looked to be about seven or eight years old and he was sitting in his seat, very straight, very still. And he was, well, she noticed that he was holding back the tears and she goes, are you scared? And he was nodded his head a little bit. She goes, would you like me to hold your hand? And he nodded. And she goes, at that point, full mummy mode went in. And I gently talked him through, like I was talked to him as though I was reading him a nighttime story. Slowly, my voice lilting, I began to explain to him the process of takeoffs. Well, the pilots turning on the engines, that's the noise we heard. Now he's in school increasing the speed while we move down. And then the pilot, when he knows that it's safe, he'll put the flaps down and the wings will move. And she pointed, see, they're moving out there. And that's what's gonna create the lift to get us into the sky. And now, isn't that beautiful? And she said, the pilot is a really nice man and he's totally in charge and knows what to do to get the airplane into the sky and keep us all safe. The little boy looked at her with a big smile and he seemed relieved, but she said he wasn't the only one. She goes, I realized then that I was the one who was scared. And as much as people might think I was the angel helping this little boy, it was actually the other way around. That little boy was the angel helping me. She said, I never again felt scared going on a plane again, or the takeoff. So it was, it was for her super helpful. So again, talking to somebody through what is going on for you, what is, what is going to happen uh, next, or it's even one of the things that they've suggested this month for a practice is that we take at least 10 minutes a day to do a practice of scanning our bodies so that you can become more aware of any sensations and tensions or stories that may be hiding in there. As, and I don't want you to think that from all this, there, there are things that you'll definitely maybe need more help than other things, 
but there are ways that we can help our body to relax and allow them the motions and the energy to move through. Now they suggest that maybe setting aside 10 minutes a day to do the practice, you can either do it lying down or sitting up. And there's no wrong way to do the spiritual practice. But if you take a few full deep breaths, and like what Jill did in the beginning of her meditation and let your mind begin to relax and then feel the sensations in your body and connect with the floors, whatever surface if you're sitting and feel your body getting heavy. And then just move through your body. Start with your head, maybe your eyes. And if you can do this, and then, you know, it's going to take a little longer. I won't go through the whole thing here. And what I will do, though, is I can put a, I'll put a link for a, a one that you can watch and listen to a meditation to help you. And I really encourage you this week to take time to feel into your body, to see where that energy is, is maybe stuck or could help to be moved. You know, I read um, in something in, uh, I, I love the Magnolia a magazine and she has a quote in here from Nicola Bauer. She says, we are what shapes us but the story doesn't have to end there. Whether we're meant to break the mold or fill it with something altogether different, to flourish is to find our own way in a world that's better for it. When we trust that inner spark, we make room for others to do the same. It's a mysterious yet beautiful kind of unfolding fueled by what is and what could be a beautiful unfolding. So when we start to heal our own bodies, when we start to take that time, that is that beautiful unfolding of our hearts. That we're allowing ourselves that self-care, that space, that time to move through things and change. And again, we can heal seven generations forward, seven generations back. So I'll put I'll put a link in in the chat for you guys for to do a meditation if you're willing to play with me this week and practice taking five to 10 minutes and feeling your body and moving through it. And Ernest Holmes says the intelligent in the physical body is a subconscious intelligence. It works creatively, but within a certain fixed limitations. It's like a person sent on an errand and told what to do, knowing only to do what they are told. That's from the essential Ernest Holmes. So if we take that time and start to focus on our body, allowing the emotion, allowing to shift the energy, we might notice a shift in our own lives, a shift that will hopefully impact your your well-being, because each person here is whole, perfect, and complete, exactly as they are. So let's take a moment and settle into that time and space of knowing that truth. Knowing the truth that there is one life, one love, one universal mind that is operating here. That beauty, that perfection, the health, wholeness. It is all right here, right now. And each person here listening to this or experiencing it live at the moment, know this truth for yourself that you are connected to that divinity, that essence that is whole, perfect and complete. So as we look at the universe and the divine, knowing it is whole, perfect, and complete, how can I be any different? So tune into that heart space of that knowing of that truth and claim, claim wholeness, claim perfection, claim vitality. 
So as I claim this for myself, I claim it for each of you today, knowing that I am healing and revealing. I am moving forward in life, knowing that everything is unfolding in perfection. It is unfolding in grace and ease. And I allow my emotions to flow through me. So as I release these words in gratitude, gratitude for knowing this truth, for claiming it, for being here in this moment, this present moment, I release these words to the law of mind. I let it be, I let it go. And so it is.